see the deepest greens, I hear the darkest blues, might not be synesthesia, might be your apartment fumes, good, good, get up and dance, good, good, get up and dance, I will, will wipe my Like, in terms of like changing, changing what I do, you know, for, for an outcome, I've done that all the time, with battle rap, uh, uh, I used to do it on the street corners, right? On the street corners, you could just be as fast and as wild and as creative as you want to be. And, um, you know, then one day, there was a battle, a big battle I was on stage, and it was over, you know, tried by 12. It was like eight mile, you know? And I was, and uh, I got there, all these people that I can like wrap circles around on a street corner, I got there. And because he knows how to set up one, two, Duh, 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 he won, you know? So I had to learn how to do that. So that was my first compromise, I believe. I can have like a really good beat, a really good song concept, but what Mike does really well is like, he's good at melodies, you know? And uh, I could be like, fuck that melody stuff, I don't do that. But I, I won't. At this, when I was younger, I would have. Um, you know, even but with the whole like mainstream, major label, all that stuff. Like when I was a kid, I used to think like, oh, never sell out back. No, that music sucks and all that. But no, that music is really hard to make. It is really hard to make, uh, it's really hard to make, uh, you know, all go to everything. That's not like the guy's first song. You know, you would think like, oh, it's just really simple because he said this and this and this and then, you know, popped Molly, I'm sweating. Like, I, my favorite conversations are with people that don't like 2 chains. I just love it. Like, because those are like the biggest idiots in the world. Like, okay, for, for the sake of taste, you don't like 2 chains. some people don't like sushi. I think sushi is amazing. But you can't say sushi sucks as a food. No, it takes a, lot of, it takes a lot of effort to make sushi, you know what I'm saying? But if that's not your taste, then so be it. Um, yeah, so back to what I said in the beginning. Um, I'm not against compromise if it is aligned with my initial goal. But if it's not aligned with my initial goal and it's someone else's goal, then they can, you know, do something with themselves. Yep, yeah, I know what you wanted to say. <laughs> you were going to tell somebody to eat a bowl of something, yes. weren't you? <laughs> yes, yes. I know you were. Right. <laughs> Musically, aesthetically, like, I, I developed under, like, uh, what I would consider maybe a unique template. Um, like my favorite band is this band called They Might Be Giants, and they make music that shouldn't be successful at all, really. It's very nasal and very nerdy and very, like, you know, some would say corny, but it's, I, it, it is my favorite music because they, like, they never, they have never tried to do anything but what they wanted to do. And, and it has been successful for me. And um, this is probably like a blessing and a curse thing, but like I've developed under that. And I feel like with, with everything that I've ever done musically, especially as a solo artist, I've completely put like all of my chips on whatever it is that I wanted to do. Um, I guess I, I want to, I want to know if somebody feels like I'm making a mistake by doing something, maybe. Um, because I have made mistakes, you know. Everybody, everybody does, especially uh, when you make this kind of this kind of music. That it's not, you know, it's not top forty ready. It's not, you know, it's not the. Uh, it doesn't necessarily follow like a cookie cutter kind of factory pattern of what of what people expect from that music. Anyway. Um, so yeah, it's all it's all risks. Like every song is a risk. Every verse is a risk. I mean, I I had a really good year last year because I kind of finally embraced it. Like, oh yeah, I really can do whatever I want to do. You know what I mean? Like, I can make whatever song, whatever way, rap whatever way. You know what I mean? Because there's there's the I think the only thing anybody ever expects me to really do is what I want to do. You know? So there's no reason for me to ever do anything less than that. You know what I mean? Um, I, I I'm often still very frightened. You know what I mean? There's a there's a time like I just finished a record, and uh, there was a, you know a time when it's getting mixed, a time before it goes to master. I'm like freaking out every day over every note, over every word, over the way everything is placed, um, and I'm still freaking out a little bit because nobody's heard it yet. You know what I mean? But like, you know, well, yeah, these, these guys these guys have heard. They gave me a thumbs up, which, which is which is cool. Um, but yeah, it's 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 very scary. 
it's a very scary thing to do because you know it's uh, if it's successful, I reap all the benefit. If it's a failure, it's all in my face. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and uh, and I've been able to see a little bit. Of that. I've been see, able to see a little bit of both ways and see how um, like I've started to build an audience for myself and to see. Um, what they've come to expect from me, what they like about what I do, and then there's things that they don't like sometimes. And, and it's, it's interesting because some of that's great market research, because again, I'm selling a product to a market, but you know, at all times you can't please everybody, you know what I mean? And if I allow all of those voices to ring into my head and my heart and my soul, then I'll just be a big confused mess every day, you know what I mean? And make shit that doesn't make any sense at all. You know, so it, it's I, I do want to listen in some in some sense because uh, I'm not making music in the bathroom. I do want people to buy it. I'm selling art. You know what I mean? So I have to listen. I have to pay attention. But I have to be very careful to shield myself from uh, from having each and every person's individual opinion be of uh, most importance. Because uh, I've had moments where I've let all that in. It just ravages me to no end. You know what I mean? And it doesn't really, I don't think it benefits me or the audience to do that. So uh, there's just no, no, no label other than Health Fire Club has ever wanted to fuck with me. Which is very interesting because by all like signs i keep the internet in a headlock like you know and that's that's being modest like i do and um but like i, I feel like they just know like people hear my shit and they're like nah, that, that dude is on one all the time we gotta drive by him you know what i mean because um the stuff that i make is is purposely weird and and it's been that way from the jump and after i made my second mixtape and especially this this I tried once to do this compromise thing, and, and, and I exploited Mike and his affluence in rap music, and I made a tape for a label, and I was like, Mike, will you pitch this to this label, and da 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 Mike, being a great friend, did that for me, and the label hated it, you know what I mean, they didn't like it at all, and um, it, it really bummed me out, and for about eight months, I internalized that horrible feeling, and then I just decided to never do that ever again. <laughs> and, and, I, and I won't do that ever again. You know what I mean? Because those are like the worst emails that I've ever received, and I kept them. Like, where the dude's like, Yeah, we heard the tape, dog. It wasn't anything special. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like, ah! You know, and like, and then I, I feel double bad because like Mike sent it to him, so I'm like, now they think Mike sucks and they think I suck. I've ruined everything. So where I'm at now is just trying to be as transparent as possible with my audience and charging them with a certain responsibility. Like, hey, I'm a young idiot, and because enough of you have made me believe I can do this, now I need you to continue to help me do this, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so there's this, this back and forth directly with the audience, uh, but certainly not to any third party whatsoever. And, and I, I would like to keep it that way as long as I can. Well, and, uh, and having multiple jobs in the bus driver act, you know, you know, compromise is kind of inherent, except to wear several different hats throughout the day. Um, but um, what I'm trying to, do music and make things. Uh, I try to be a, especially this last year. I try to just pay attention to what I want to do and um, not get too overwhelmed with what should happen or what I should make in order to satisfy my audience or a wider audience. You know, I just so I'm trying to make a more honest music now. But I go through times when I think I need to cow to certain audiences, and uh, I also do a lot of commercial music. Um, for televisions and stuff where I had to do that specifically. And, um, or at least I have done that. I haven't done that recently. But none of that music really goes anywhere. That music just goes into a vault. So uh, it's more of an exercise than anything. But, um, yeah, compromise is very important to how I do my, my, my business. And not only for me, but for anyone involved in my life, you know. Because <laughs> you know, it, it does take a toll on a other people when you kind of I don't know I don't know when you when you when you leave this when you leave this lifestyle that's divergent you know because I think our lifestyles are very almost the antithesis of a lot of people's lives you know we, we go out and we gallivant and we you know we take risks and we we come back you know and it's uh 
it's very it can be very jarring for people in your life you know but um but yeah compromise is, is a very solid truth in what i do but i'm trying to get better at it this year people like milo really have encouraged me to just kind of embolden your own self and trust your instincts and um don't let your ideas be curtailed by trends or what's going on you know and um and also to try to project what your economy could be with an idea, you know what I mean? Like, I have an idea, but it's a great thing. I could monetize it this way, and it'd be great, you know what I mean? And I think that's something that's really important in LFR Club at, at this moment, you know? We spend a lot of time brainstorming and just kind of projecting things into the future that eventually turn into happenings and turn into ways for us to sustain, you know, ourselves. But, uh, but yeah, that's it.